From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. And, you know, this is sort of a special program for me because we have been celebrating Jack's birthday. And, uh, by the way, I want to thank all of you who sent him a special birthday card. Oh, I think he's got right about 2,000 cards in the mail, yeah, didn't you, Jack? <laughs> and uh, we want to thank you also for your prayers. Keep him in your prayers because God brought him back for a very special time to go around the world and give the gospel. And uh, speaking about the program, you know, we are going into a, a different format. And uh, we want you to be sending in your questions. It's going to be sort of like a question and answer. We've been talking about that. So send in your questions with your name, but I won't use your name. Uh, maybe the first name, and that will be it. But uh, the other day, I went to Jackie, and I said, everybody's sending in questions. I've got a question. And he said, what's your question? I said, well, my question is this, and I think every lady who is listening will be happy that I ask. How much can a lady spend on a dress? I'd like to know <laughs> well, how much. When I gave you the first time, Brought you home crying to your mother. <laughs> Never forget it. I grew up in a Belgian home, and we were tight-fisted. And I used to do all my shopping at Hot Sam's, anywhere I can get a deal. And so Rixella wanted a new dress, and I sent her over there, and what she got didn't cost very much. <laughs> and she went home and says, Mama, look at what I... She says, it's going to get better, honey. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. Well, I'll tell you why it hasn't got better. <laughs> I decided not to take a salary seven years ago. And so I got no pay of any kind except my pension money. I want to serve God. I want to go home empty-handed. I'm not in it for a $6 million home or a $60 million jet like some of these religious crooks on television. Be careful where you send your money. So I said, I'm going to set an example, and I'm not going to take a dime for the next seven years. I'm going to serve God freely. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> do you know what happened? God's my witness. I can prove it here by showing you 312 shows, seven years of show. I wore the same $1995 dollars coat for seven years till the wreaths were getting ragged. And I can show you the pictures for every one of the shows because I'm honest when I say these things. So don't you think that she ought to have a little more sympathy for me when she buys a new dress? Well, I always brought you a new tie, you know, and so you want me to tell the truth here? Uh, he has one coat and 300 ties. <laughs> That's all right, ladies. I guess you wanted to hang me for a while. <laughs> well, you know, it's always good to have a little bit of fun in the beginning of our program and to enjoy. You know, that's one, part of the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy. We need to have joy in our hearts and enjoy the day because we're walking with the Lord. Amen. Well, you know, we're going through the Ten Commandments. Last week we did five. I want to put on those five on the screen right now and just quickly repeat what they were. And of, of course, thou shalt have no other gods before me, number one. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, number two. Number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Woo! For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh this name in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We need certainly to remember the days that the Lord wants special for him. And number five, honor thy father and thy mother. How true. Well, you know, Jack, I want to thank you so very, very much for how you explained each one of those. But today we're going to go on. And number six is breaking my heart. It really, really is. 
because it has to do with many, many things going on out there. The first one, number six, thou shalt not kill. Now, you know, there are many reasons for killing. This first one I want to show you. And it's going on all around the world. Take a look, if you will. Iman, who converted to Christianity, my own family now, want to kill me. Are you kidding? Your family wants to kill you. Because you I'm sorry, a Jack. Christian they didn't want to be a Muslim any longer. That's right. And you know, you want to say a word about that. It's wrong to kill for anything. It's wrong to oh, kill. Oh, yes. And wait a minute. It goes even farther. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And no murder, even that kind, you hate people, has eternal life abiding in him. Be careful. Well, what we're going to go on with now, <clears throat> I hope I can do this without weeping, friends, because I am so burdened and so heartbroken about it. But if you will, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see this next article. Take a look, please. There's about to be, uh, from, this is from World Magazine, about to be a significant pushback against California's abortion on demand. And it's coming from the Hispanic community. Well, praise the Lord for that. You know, they say that you can just say you want an abortion and you get it and that does away with the child's life. Well, some people are pushing back on that. Going on. Keeping abortions out of Birmingham, that's at Birmingham, Alabama, Pro-lifers seek to stall planned parenthood construction and build a hopeful pro-life, pro-life community. Well, here you see it. I love New York. Abortion anytime. Are you kidding? Love New York because of abortion? Going on. Well, life around the world. It's not just here in the United States where they're taking babies' lives. But Ireland, the big approval for it. And then, of course, we see Argentina and Australia. It's going on around the world, life being taken. And then, again, may Almighty God have mercy on the state of New York, an unidentified person who called out in the New York State Senate chamber after lawmakers cheered the passage of a law undermining protections for unborn children in the state. Well, it's even worse than that. And then we'll go on with this. Virginia Democrat proposes bill allowing abortion as the woman is dilating. She carried the baby nine months, and now she's going to have the baby, and she said, kill it. Going on, Virginia governor defends Letting babies die after birth. After birth, abortion Enough. rights bill passes in New York. <clears throat> and then I want to give you one more. Not just in New York. Seven states already allow abortion up to birth. Not just New York. Alaska, Colorado, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, and Vermont, along with Washington, D.C. Friends, it breaks my heart, and I'm sure it breaks your heart. Did you know there's a law here in the United States that if you, uh, that if you abuse or kill an animal, you have a two-year prison term? But there's nothing wrong with killing a baby. I can't believe it, Jack. You believe this book? Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it were better than a millstone were hanged around his neck and he were dropped into the sea. You ought to be jounded, you dirty, rotten sinners. No time in history has America and America's people become as far from God as they are now. You're murderers. My Bible says the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and homers and murderers and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire forever and ever. And it's not fun to be there. 
there's a picture of one in my Bible. And it shows what's there. And he says, send to Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm tormented in this flame. That's what's going to happen to all you people that are killing those little babies. God forgive you. Get right with God. God will forgive you. Yes. <clears throat> He'll forgive any sin, but hell is yours if you continue. You know, Jack, that's a little bit of uh, consolation. I received a letter, I've said this on our program before, from a, a man in California who was going to be put to death because he had killed someone. And he'd been watching our program. And he said, you know, I've accepted the Lord and I know, I, I know I've been forgiven. And when they take my life, I know now, because I've been forgiven, washed in the blood of Christ, that I can go to heaven. And you know, friends, you can't be forgiven of anything but don't make excuses for the tragedies. We need to really say, no, we don't do this. Come on, let we me in up. on that. Yes. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. All those Ten Commandments, you can be blotted out if you say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I want a change of heart. I receive you. And you're the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Take mine right now, and he'll do it. But if you don't, you'll be lost forever. And you know, Rick Sellis sings a song. Oh, I wish you could sing it right now. Think what it means to be lost forever. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm tormented. You're not going to get away with it. And soon the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. Do you know that just last year, it's a year and a half now, the Holy Spirit came on August 13th. He's a Jack Van Impey. I have come to tell you that God the Father has sent me to tell you that you are the man that's going to be the last day prophet. And you're going to have to speak out on every sin. Will you do it? I will. And he said, you're going to have to preach that the coming of Christ is about the door. The second coming is about to happen. It's going to be the bloodiest war in history after we're taken. Do you know that every single thing I've preached is happening? I want to show you something. This is going to happen two weeks from now. This is a message I preached 65 years ago, the coming war with Russia. I had preached this all over the world. A million came to Christ. I name all the nations that are going to be included. But I'm going to tell you something wonderful. You're not going to be here. God says, when this happens, I will keep you from out of the hour of temptation that comes on the whole world. Out. You're going to go up to heaven in the rapture. Do you know how far heaven is? I've really been studying it. And you know where we're going to be safe? When we hear the words, come up, Heather, we are going to go up to the third heaven, which is 187 trillion billions of miles. Oh, my. Can't even begin to comprehend it. Yes. No jet or missile will ever be able to get us. We're going to be there for seven years. We're getting the rewards for all of our service on life. And that's going to happen soon, folks. Now, I had preached this all over the world. Millions got saved. I had 1,600 invitations on the waiting list. And I'm going to tell you something. I lost this thing. We had a fire, and I could never prove that I had preached it. Guess what? After all these years, a pastor from Florida said, a member of my church just died. They told me to come because they've cleaned out everything there, but he has a room and there's some things in it. He said, I went and, and you had hit 25 Jack Van Ippery videos and this is one of them. I said, thank you, Jesus. Now why? Starting two weeks from now, I am going to get this into your homes. And you're going to say something. Jack Van Ippey is that prophet that the Holy Spirit told me 
he would become for these last hours that is to preach this coming of Christ to set up the glorious kingdom of peace forever on earth soon. Now, you want to hear something really shocking? Everything I mentioned, every country I mentioned has been in the news the last two weeks. And I'm going to have every headline here two weeks from now. And you're going to get ready to meet Jesus. It's coming. Prepare me, God. Amos 4.12. Mm. Amen. 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 Well, you know, we can be ready for that wonderful, wonderful appearing of the Lord. Well, I'm going to quickly just go on now uh, for the rest of the Ten Commandments here. Thou shalt not commit adultery with everything going on in the Catholic Church and in the Protestant Church. You know, uh, the lust and everything going on, it breaks my heart also. Thou shalt not commit adultery is one of the main commandments. Yeah, but there's more to it than that, Rexella. Why? It begins with another term, fornication. And that's you kids, you sit in the cars and fornicate without marriage. The next step is adultery. You get married and you cheat on your wife. You run with prostitutes. You meet other women. You cheat on your family. And then there are the homosexuals, men with men, women with women. But here's the worst thing. You're hearing about all of the Catholic priests who fool with children. But don't just blame them. We got a lot of good priests, and many of the good priests say, please put our names in the paper because we love our God and we're serving him honestly. And I have great respect for Pope John Paul and Pope Benedict. Very little for Pope Francis. He says, I don't believe in hell. You can be atheist and get to heaven. No, you can't. And I'll take you on Pope Francis anywhere for debate and show you 211 times where there's a place called hell in this book. A pope so wrong. The prophecy of the church is this is the pope that will rule with the Antichrist. Watch out, folks, it's coming. All of this happens after we're gone in the rapture, the coming of Christ. It's right at the door. Oh, God help us. But wait a minute, some of you Protestant ministers, Billy Graham's magazine reported. Seven out of every ten of our Protestant ministers are involved in pornography. The lust of the eyes. God forgive you. Jesus is coming. The world is loaded with every sin. We are commandment breakers. And even some of the preachers are now saying, soon the commandments will be done. No, they won't. I have a guy on my board, Dr. McVitie, just put in the greatest Christian college in Canada now. I'm sending all my friends who want to study the Word of God, and I've got 16 doctors to him, his school. And he says, I'm going to have everyone there and in my 10 other Christian schools around the world, even in Korea, study of any peace practice because he's always been true to the Word. Thank you, Dr. McVitie. Thank you for being on my board as well. Oh, All right, Rick, Jack. You know what we have now? Uh, this week, a very, very special offer for you. And it's called The Final Seven Signs. You want to hear Jack really give a message that will move your heart? You, you're going to feel like you were right there at the day of Pentecost because 3,000 souls were saved when he gave this wonderful, wonderful message. The day the, of Pentecost repeated. Right, right. The Final Seven Signs. Now, you can sort of experience this for yourself. And, uh, you, you know, it's something that we're seeing all around us. Seven different final signs will cause us to really praise the Lord, not only for those 3,000 that accepted the Lord, but also for the fact that we can get people ready right now and have them know that they're ready to see the Lord. The final seven signs. Are you kidding? That's quite a word final because the coming of the Lord could be any time. It could be tomorrow and we want to have as many people ready 
as possible. And when Shella, now, when they I'm did it, they on. could see the people going forward. Yes, 3,000 yes, in service. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> I'm on fire wonderful. for Jesus. Uh, yes, you are today. That's wonderful, Jack. I'm going to go on here, friends, with something that really uh, uh, disturbs me, too, and we're seeing it all around us. It's happening. Thou shalt not steal. Now, <laughs> we're seeing everything. Police investigating a second. Bank robbery in a week? I'm going to go on real fast. Attempted robbery, Wells Fargo Bank in Selma Ria. Oh, my word. Man attempts smash and grab robbery at K Jewelers inside Southland Center. <laughs> Everywhere. East Point PD. Two charged with felonies in 12 porch thefts. We're hearing about that all the time. People going right up on the porches and stealing those packages. And there were your Amazon packages stolen. Porch pirates run rampant in the holiday season. Well, we know that we're past the holiday season right now. But uh, my, oh my, we're seeing stealing like we've never seen before. God says, thou shalt not steal. Do not want what others have. Yes, Jack. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you Christians now, you don't give 10% of your income. You are stealing from Almighty God. What? Look what Malachi has to say. You have robbed me. Where have you robbed you, Lord Jesus? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse. You're stealing from me, God. You folks better start tithing because you're going to see Jesus soon. And there is a special crown for those who have won souls and you've sent your money to win souls. Don't it send it to the Playboys that won $60 million jets. I promise you, and this is my promise to God in you, anything you ever send will only be used to win the lost for Christ. And I have now started the billion soul crusade for Jesus. And hopefully in the next few years, before I reach too many years after 90, I'm going home. Now, he goes on to say, if you give your tithes and offerings, I will bless you like you've never been blessed. Bless me, God. All right, Jack, I'm going to go on here with uh, the ninth commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Oh, my word, from the time we were little children. Did you do that? No, Mama, I didn't do that. You know, we start out telling lies. And uh, I just received this, which was very, very revealing. Americans are now. Disinformation tactics, they're using this on one another. In other words, uh, even on television sometimes, they don't care if what they're giving is accurate. Oh my, I couldn't believe this when I got it in the mail. But it's very, very important. Thou shalt not uh, bear false witness. And the media or is the worst lie. crowd to tear down our President Trump. And I'm not saying I'm for him, but what you're doing to this man is against God's word. All right, Jack, and I'm going to get this last one in here too. Thou shalt not covet house, wife, servant, ox or ass, or anything that is your neighbor's. Don't covet. Don't want what they have. And, you know, people are, are actually saying, oh, I wish I had that. I wish I had her. I wish I had him. No, no. Don't covet. Right, One Jeff? verge yet. What is it? The love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And you're going to be lost. You're robbed from God, and then you love money. You pile it up. God forgive you. Oh, yes, Jack. Now, the Ten Commandments. Oh, my. Did you find yourself in there? I did. You know, uh, as a little girl, I said, I, no, Mama, I didn't do that. We start out, you know, from birth oftentimes. And we might just even take our brother's uh, ice cream cone or start <laughs> doing whatever. Yes. Yeah, right. You know, stealing. Oh, we start very young. But I don't think there's anyone, an adult, who can say, I haven't done wrong. But we can be forgiven, as amen. we said earlier oh, in the program. Amen. How wonderful to know that the blood of Christ will cleanse. Oh, I love that. 
will cleanse from all sin, no matter what it is, how bad it is. You want to be cleansed of your maybe drugs, alcohol, or whatever, the Lord will cleanse you. Pray this prayer with Jack of accepting Jesus as your Savior. This is why he came and gave his blood for you. Jack? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin, A-double-L. I don't care what you've done. Bring it to him right now. Jesus, thank you for the cross. And I see that blood flowing from your side. It was for me. I can be forgiven. I'm sick of bearing my sin. Jesus, I'm asking you, take it from me right now. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Savior. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, please write to me. I'll send you this wonderful little booklet for steps in a new direction. You don't have to keep going the way you are. You can change. The Lord just came into your life. You're his child now. So you want to walk with him. Uh, first steps in a new direction will be in the mail as soon as I hear from you. Please write to me. I would really love to to hear from you. And now our offer of the week. Oh my, oh my, please pick up the telephone and make the call or write to us for this wonderful, wonderful offer of the week, the final seven signs. We pr Jack proves in here as he's preaching that we are the generation before the Lord comes again to take us home. Well, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717 Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you once again to write to us or write us, uh, call us, and we'd be happy to get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Get the truths of this teaching, I'm going to tell you, and you'll have a glimpse of your future, so let us hear from you right away. And I just want to say that uh, this little saying has been going through my mind almost the whole program. The best reason for doing right today is tomorrow. Certainly the coming of the Lord could be at any moment. We need to be ready. Look forward to being your home again next week. Until then, always remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.